Hello. So welcome back to our series on asymptote, uh, the drawing tool which is often used with LaTeX and you know tech related typesetting tools. So in this video we are going to look at how to draw graphs and in the same context we are going to look a bit at functions uh, in asymptote and you know how you can make your own functions. So let's begin. Okay, so let's first start with a very simple graph. We're going to draw a cosine. So to draw a cosine, what we're going to do is we're going to first import the graph asymptote module and then we're just going to say draw and we're going to call the function graph with cos and we're going to make it go from let's say minus 4 through 4 and then if I build this, I get a nice cosine except that the cosine doesn't seem to go fully you know from one place to the other let's actually make it a little nicer let's actually make it go from minus 4 pi to 4 pi so that you get you know i think about four cycles in so you can count the number of cycles here it's about one two three four you have four cycles so the graph tool just takes a function as argument and takes the extents and just gives you the graph in a very easy manner of course we can embellish this now because we can add an x-axis Okay, let's say an x-axis uh, like so and uh, let's say that you know we want it to uh, just have the label x and that gives you a nice x-axis mm -hmm. we'll have a y-axis and the y-axis is going to look like this except that the y-axis we want a little you know higher up so what we can do is we can just say y max is 2 so that you know it just goes slightly to the top okay now let me actually make some changes let's actually make this go from let's say 0 through 8 pi okay 0 to 8 pi you can clearly see that you know uh, it, the graph now starts at uh, 0 and goes up to 8 pi and let's actually add some ticks okay because we need some reference to actually add the x axis points so to do that i'm going to call the x tick function and i'm going to say x tick dollar 0 okay and that should be at the point zero i think that should be there unfortunately it's not at the right point you know because it's uh, exactly intruding with my axis so let's actually there's a direction operator you know uh, argument which we can specify or i can just specify let's say northeast say northeast right the tick goes towards the northeast as you can clearly see you know over here the tick goes to the northeast and that's not what we want we want the tick actually we don't even want the tick there so to avoid the tick what you can do is you can just say size is zero and with that you have the zero tick now we want to actually label the points where we get zero crossings uh, naturally i think uh, uh, you know that uh, you know these uh, maybe maybe not exactly zero crossings we'll just mark uh, yeah i think there'll be odd <coughs> multiples of pi and so on so let's actually do that let's actually do run a for loop for int i is one i is less than let's say equal to eight and plus plus i uh, plus plus uh, i say i is equal to i plus one just to be explicit and now i'm going to just create a tick so so i'm going to just i'm going to actually add multiples of pi so string s is actually let's say um I, i'm going to say something like string of i and then let's say x we're going to add an x tick dollar plus s plus slash pi dollar at the point i into pi and let's see what this does okay this puts my uh, this puts my ticks exactly at these points uh, first thing is that the x and 8 pi are you know kind of mixing with each other so let's make the x max a little bit bigger 8 point let's say 8 into pi plus 0 0.5 that will make us have a little bit more space maybe make it one yeah that makes it slightly better but we also don't want one pi so we want to handle the case of one pi separately so to that end what we can do is we can just say you know if um, we can say if i is uh, we can actually do one thing we can actually just add the pi over here okay so we can add the pi over here and then we can say if i is just 1 then we can just say s is equal to slash pi and that's it we can even add the dollars there but let's live with this oops sorry this bracket should be here okay 
but uh, let's actually suppose that we want to change the function a little bit and we want something like e power minus something e power minus is a point one x cos x unfortunately that's not what is specified here it's cos so we can make our own user defined function let's say my function which takes an argument x and for now let's just return cos of x and then oops sorry and then let's say my function so for those who are familiar with c or c plus plus it's almost like you're passing the function as an argument you know like in c and c you have to pass a pointer but here you can just name the function now let's actually do this let's say e power, x, e power minus 0 0.1 times x times cos x and you have this kind of thing and let's actually do another thing let's actually change the graph remember graph if you say is actually not exactly a path but it's just like a path so we can actually just add any arguments which you pass to draw for example if you have red it's just going to use the red pen and if you're going to say red and let's say dashed let's say red plus dashed it's going to give you a red and dashed graph so you can do things like this very easily using your own user, user defined functions uh, but uh, you know there are many more capabilities uh, let's do one more example in this case you know it's probably useful to do one more example uh, let's say example 2.asy okay and i'm going to start again with a very basic slate with not much okay so now i'm going to actually draw a parabola uh, you know parabola is a very common conic and uh, you know many of us are familiar so parabola we are going to draw is of the form y square is equal to 4x okay but uh, since we're going to graph it as x and y we're going to actually have two parts so it's going to be y is equal to square root of 2x uh, sorry square root of 4x and y is minus square root of 4x so we're going to have two functions i'll say parabola 1 and we'll return sqrt of 4 times x and then we're just going to copy this paste it and then we'll make it parabola 2 and we're going to make it negative now we're going to say draw graph and i'm going to say parabola 1 uh, let's make it go from 0 through 8 okay let's draw this first oops i shouldn't draw this one yes so if you look at this right there is a slight issue which you will see graph decides roughly how many points you need to divide it into so you can see what happens is that here it has done some kind of a linear approximation so this means it's actually looking a little bit straight over here now to avoid this you can actually force graph to take more points to interpolate for example let's say i take a thousand points oops that should be within the graph sorry if you say thousand that makes it smooth as you can see now that uh, that effect is gone or the other thing is graph also you can instead of specifying this you can also specify the operator using which you are joining the point which graph is chosen for example if you choose dash um, let me just check what i made so yeah parabola one okay sorry yeah so when you draw okay let me just specify another bracket so if you specify dash dash it gives you the straight line effect but if you want a busier if you specify dot dot that line goes away so it's up to you to decide which we want so using a busier operator sometimes is uh, much more efficient but it may be less accurate and whenever that is the case you may want to just increase the number of points using the n argument for now we're going to stick with this and we're going to draw the other part of the parabola also and now you have a very nice parabola over here and we're going to embellish it with axis again so x axis say dollar x and we're going to say x max is 8.5 and we'll get a nice x axis there you go and we'll say y axis dollar y and we're going to say we don't want y max we're just going to ask it to you know decide itself and it gives you a nice y axis now we are going to do one more thing we are actually going to uh, add the zero let's say uh, the origin point and i'm going to say uh, i think i'll say x tick or i can even go with label here i can just say label dollar uh, zero and zero zero and 
this gives me a zero label exactly at that point and I'm going to put the label at the southwest and southwest gives me exactly what I want let's do one more exercise let's actually draw a tangent to this parabola so for a tangent uh, I'm going to use a parameterized approach so you know that a tangent can is you know you know the points on a parabola uh, this particular parabola if you parameterize it you can express them as t square 2t right because uh, if you say y square is 4x so 2t whole, whole square is 4t square and 4t square is 4t square so this is the parameterized form okay so now let's we are going to draw at a tangent to this parabola which touches the parabola at this point so how would we go, how go about doing that let's say we say pair uh, let's say touch point is and let's say first let's just create a real t is equal to and say t is equal to, i'm going to say one and this is actually t square two into t so this is my the point at which i'm touching it now the equation of the tangent if you go back to your trigonometry textbook you will find this is y minus 2t is equal to 1 by t times x minus t square this is the equation of the tangent so y minus 2t is equal to 1 upon t into x minus t square so i'm going to draw i'm going to create a user defined function which just draws the tangent so i'll say real my tangent real x and from here i say return 2 times t by the way this t is a global variable which is taken from here so 2 times t plus 1 upon t times x minus t square and this and i'm going to again use the graph function to draw this here i don't need to worry because it's a straight line so i'm just going to say draw my tangent uh, i'm of course graph my tangent and we're going to start at zero we're going to go up to uh, we should actually make it x max and then we should actually uh, replace this with x max okay now 0 x max and that's it and there you go you have a tangent of course this tangent seems to be really big because you know it, it increases the y axis and therefore proportionally the x axis is also increased you can check the documentation as to why that happens now we want to choose the tangent at a different point let's say 1.5 and you get a slightly different tangent let's say you get you choose 2 you get a different tangent and so on so i think this this is the problem not that yes yeah so now you have your tangent let's also mark the point at which the tangent touches you're going to say dot um, let's see yeah dot at touch point so if you say dot at touch point you get a nice point over there and let's also put a label and we'll put the label as dollar p at uh, touch point and we'll put it at the north west and there you go now if you just change this t let's say we'll change it to 1 of 1.5 so we can actually get tangents at various points y axis adjust automatically let's say we say 2.5 you get another tangent okay so the code for both of these i will make available in the repository and put the link in the description if you have any requests doubts please just feel free to write it as a comment and i'll be happy to help you thank you